We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Just a little bit. Now start to pull your shoulder back. Passe. Plie. Pull it to your cradle. Good evening. This is Mind, Booty, and Soul Radio. Mind, Booty, and Soul Live. We're here at LA Talk Live. Come to latalklive.com um, to chime in and tune into this conversation. Our telephone number is 323 473 3100. Today, we're actually launching and introducing Mind, Fitness, and Soul. And we have two wonderful, wonderful guests. We have Sean LaPree, she's in the studio right now. And later on, and later on, we'll be uh, welcomed by Tiana Oliver, who's another fitness enthusiast. Um, but before we get into our uh, show, uh, you know, I have my little news clip that I always like to kind of talk about. And this big week's thing was the whole felon, cute felon guy who was all over the internet. I know when I kept seeing people commenting, I'm just like, you know, okay, just get by, get by. And I just kept seeing it over and over again. And finally I said, what is this? You know, but the question I have to you, because you're a woman and, you know, you guys like, you know, thugs or, you know, <laughs> the, the the guy that shows that he can protect you and provide security. What's the fascination with men like that? Um, well, I think it's more of a stigma that we all like bad boys. So I think it's either she loves what she knows she shouldn't have or you feel that they really need to go to that extreme to be able to protect me personally. I don't find a felon very appealing. Mm -hmm. So I'm Are not going to sure? promote. I'm very positive. <laughs> I'm not going to promote that at all. I kind of ignored that little uh, trend that was going on on Instagram and Facebook. It was just like, I'm not going to highlight someone who's obviously on the wrong side of the law. Yeah, well, they were saying he was cute. And it started off like, oh, he's cute. And then, you know, you start seeing it more drastic. So, you know, I think uh, there's been this fascination with the thug, the drug dealer, the baller, you know, the crack cocaine dealer. You know, we've had many different uh, versions of this character. Uh, but at the end of the day, he usually is in jail or, or ends up dying, you know. So um, I don't know. As a woman, I just want to understand, you know, do your friends, you know, how do they feel about that in general? not necessarily this picture but do they like the kind of like guy with the edge and you know versus the nice you know gentleman type um I, I would say some of my friends I mean it varies but ultimately I still say even with my circle we try to stay away from criminals <laughs> so I mean they could have a little rough edge to them mm -hmm. but I mean there's a limit there has to be some balance mm -hmm. well I have a favorite saying here you guys like the sensitive thug <laughs> which doesn't exist <laughs> so that's why you're going to keep chasing yourself over and over again and wh what do we want we want the domesticated hoe so and she doesn't exist so exactly. you know I, I think we're all set up to kind of you know follow uh, our tail and lead to nowhere mm -hmm. but anyways we're, we're introducing my fitness and so and I want to thank you so much you know for our for the people just tuning in we're here with Sean LaPree and she's a fitness instructor fitness trainer um, and she has a wonderful story because Sean although she's beautiful and she's always been beautiful but she didn't necessarily always come from this kind of fitness category um, so tell me a little bit where you came from and what what got you into fitness what what inspired you um, well, I weighed myself one day back in 2011 and realized I was six pounds away from 200 pounds. And at 5'1", that was extreme. Mm -hmm. um, but I always carried my weight pretty well. 
But um, a few months after my mother passed away, which was in June of 2011, I discovered pole dance. And my weight didn't become an issue until I wanted to advance more. I felt, okay, I need to lose weight. I need to look like everyone else around me. And um, eventually I took my mindset out of how I looked and how I was going to appear to everyone else and focused more on how I needed to feel, what I need to do to gain the strength to operate. So once it moved from being aesthetic to focusing on my health, I was able to successfully lose 50 pounds up until um, the time I started actually training myself and learning new nutrition tips mm -hmm. and changing my lifestyle around. Then from there, I started gaining muscle, became stronger. When I got back on the pole and into other aerial arts, I s amazed myself. So really, my fitness started off more aesthetic and more for an outside force. Um, and eventually, it became more about me and getting in tune with my body, listening to myself, and eventually getting to the point where I can hoist myself up in midair and not worry about mm -hmm. whether or not I'm small enough because I know I'm strong enough to lift all of me. Yeah, but my, my girlfriend, Anthony, said you're hot on the pole and that you, <laughs> you actually are extremely confident and you, you know, you do so many things on the pole. Um, I think we have a caller right here. So uh, let's uh, tune in. Oh, I guess we don't have a caller. Um, uh, thank you so much. So what I wanted to uh, discuss, though, uh, you're actually in the demo reel that I just showed. Now, if you had a chance to see the demo reel, it's actually on MindFitnessAndSoul.com. It's also on MindBootyAndSoul.com. You can always check it out on Facebook on MindBootyAndSoul.com as well. But within the demo reel, you're actually doing some wonderful things there. You're you're uh, training. You're jumping up these stairs. You, you're stretching. You know, I had a chance to actually do a workout with you. And, uh, you know, it was a 20-minute workout. And let me tell you, it was uh, pretty tough. I was sore the next two days. But um, so once again, it's amazing how you went from pole dancing and you wanted to become more lighter on the pole. And then that always coincide with like, I need to stop focusing on exterior and what people think about me. And you got more into yourself, right. you know, and how long did it take you to lose 50 pounds? Um, well, it was a struggle at first because I was still trying to get into my body. Um, I would say for the first about 30 pounds, it took me nearly a year. But um, A with, year? Yeah, nearly. I would say around eight months. Okay. And that was with just excessive amounts of cardio, um, trying different diets. Um, but with the program I'm on now, it happened like 10 pounds in one month, and I've been consistent with it. So um, once I educated myself more and realized what my body type was, what my body likes and what my body does not like, what exercises I enjoyed, because a, a lot of fitness is based on enjoyment. If I don't mm -hmm. enjoy it, I'm not going to be motivated to do it. And once I found my niche, I, it, it just seemed like the fat melted off. Well, I mean, that's a long process. So now if you have a client and, you know, they come into the game and they're like, you know, hey, I have to lose like 50 to 70 pounds, mm -hmm. you know, realistically, what kind of guidelines or how long would you say for them to shed off those pounds? If they are strict and dedicated and they're eating properly, then I would say safely they can drop up to 10 pounds in four weeks, which is practically 10 pounds a month. So um, and usually when you first begin with fitness, especially when you're new to it, you'll drop quickly. Mm -hmm. So within the first three months, it's not very hard to lose that 20 pounds, if not more. OK, really? Mm hmm. Because, you know, I've always been maybe, you know, I think I was at my worst in 2010. Um, you know, I was probably 15 to 20 pounds overweight. And for guys, it's, it's so much different. You know, all I have to do is say if I can dedicate myself into the gym and stay consistent, you know, I know and I'm 100 percent confident that I, it's going to turn out. I'm going to look good on the other side. I'm going to get cut. I'm going to get my stomach down. I know that it's going to start from my face and from my feet and f eventually it'll get to my stomach. Right. But women, you guys have a whole different set of uh, obstacles and, you know, mental barriers to break through. And, and, and a lot of it deals with your emotion. Is that right? Right. Um, hormonal balance. Um, there are certain times of the month that men don't have to experience. Thank God. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that alone could put almost 10 pounds of just water retention on mm -hmm. a woman. So we do have to deal with more struggles. And 
Um, from my own experience, it seems as if women are under a microscope a lot more as far as yes. how they appear. So it's even more added pressure because not only are we pressuring ourselves, but we have to deal with the pressures outside of ourselves as well. Well, for instance, you know, you were telling me you had some family issues and then, you know, you're looking on the TV as well. So it's like you were dealing with one particular environment telling you need to be super thin. And then your your parent, excuse me, your family was basically saying, no, we don't want you to lose weight. So that must have been a difficult struggle going back and forth. Right. Um, well, with my family, it was more so they were so used to me being thicker. And in my family, it's saying, okay, if you're thicker, you're healthier, we're feeding you. Because I wasn't brought up on McDonald's. I was brought up on home-cooked meals. Uh -huh. So I was a healthy child. It was just that I was always chubby or healthy, so to speak. <laughs> um, so as I got older and I wanted to thin out, my understanding was I needed to get stick thin. And neither me or my family understood my body type very well until I started studying myself and you know did my BMI test found out oh, okay I'm 65% body uh, weight 65% muscle um, so even with that it, it meant something to me and it meant okay I need to inform my family because I do need them as a support system and let them know hey okay I know I don't need to get stick thin but I do need to shed a few pounds in order to optimize my weight loss and get to the body that I want and not so much focus on what the TV is showing me or what any uh trends are going on at the time and I also wanted them to understand you know me losing weight doesn't mean I'm becoming unhealthy or that I'm starving mm -hmm. myself I'm going about it the right way so now what is your body type you know because you know in the three categories of black community we have thin thick or fat mm -hmm. but you know you were telling me before that you actually are able to create so much muscle mass especially for a woman you actually you're competing to men with being able to accelerate muscle mass over a period of time so what is your body type what would you call it and how do you take care of it and characterize it um so i've noticed i have a more muscular body type um more slang term i would say like stocky okay so because i have more muscle i definitely need more protein muscle loves protein so i understand that okay i should probably eat about mm, my body weight if not more in protein a day wow what yeah well in grams in grams <laughs> so <laughs> Thank yeah, so my body weight in grams. Let me <laughs> clarify that. <laughs> no, I'm not slugging around cows and eating them whole. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. Uh, but um, yes. So, so about 150 grams a day of protein. Yes. Um, and definitely when I'm trying to build muscle, I'll almost double that. Really? Yeah. So, um, I mean, so I have a very simple. Just, just, you mm -hmm. know, we just eat as men. So give me right. an idea what 150 grams of protein is like throughout the day. Um. Well, I'll put it this way. Um, in your standard one pound pack of hamburger meat, I'll probably go through two of those a day. What? Yeah, easy. Like I, I eat close to 10 eggs in the morning. It's no joke. <laughs> 10 eggs? Yeah. My Lord, <laughs> really? I, you never want to starve. Your body craves fat. It needs fat to you know, survive. And I make sure I'm not hungry because when I get hungry, I'll turn into the Hulk. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I'll, I'll just, I, I kind of, I won't turn green and like bust out my shirt, but it, it's like, okay, it's time for me to feed. Like, it's, yeah, I turn it to Wait, a wait a minute. <laughs> now you're telling me this. This is new information really? for me. You're going against the grain of everything I've heard about how women should be taking care of the bodies mm -hmm. and, and the way that they eat. Now you're telling me that you're, you're con uh, that's a lot of hamburger. That's a lot of eggs. Like I barely go through a dozen of eggs per week. I think I might go for five days and mm -hmm. you take that in one lesson. Why so much? And how does your body, you know, store that stuff and release it? Like that's a lot of food. <laughs> well, um, I'm lifting weights five times a week. Uh -huh. Um, and that's with weight training. And now that I'm definitely deep into my aerial arts where I'm lifting my body weight, my body needs to continue to burn off the fat that's been stored and also carbs as well. So um, I'm constantly replacing what I am burning, so to speak. Um, so 
to me, that's really not too much considering I'm now over 70% muscle. So I never want to deprive my muscles. And because that's like my focus, even though fat loss is also a focus of mine as well, I'm definitely trying to push and see how much muscle can I gain within this year, considering I was able to gain eight pounds of muscle in four weeks. And that was without understanding fully what I needed to eat because Technically, if I'm still hungry, I know I didn't eat enough. I didn't have enough fats, I didn't have enough proteins. And considering I have a simple diet where it consists of vegetables, meats, um, sweet potatoes, I, I'd have to make sure that I'm eating enough. So I know that sounds like a lot. No, no, it <laughs> sounds like, what's your monthly bill? <laughs> <laughs> it, it gets a little costly, but if you look at it, if you eat out at least three times a week, and let's just say you spend about thirty dollars on yourself a week just eating out you're spending over a hundred dollars within a month of just going to mcdonald's and grabbing a number three so if you save that money up and cook for yourself you'll actually be saving more money oh i, I already yeah. know i i eat in all the time the only time i actually eat out is when you know me and anthony go out and the date and that type mm -hmm. of thing so um but that's really interesting because you know and I want to analyze, you know, the, the body types of black women. Now, we've been through this whole kind of phase of the thick right. and the thick women. And we really went on this revolution and kind of like getting rid of the thinness. And a little bit, uh, I think our country and our culture has kind of like accepted the thick look. But how is black women or people of color, how do we variate? How do we eat versus what they're telling us to count our calories to get rid of all the fat and the sugar? You know, how what's the normal way that black or excuse me, women of color should be actually eating towards their bodies based upon the various body types that are out there for them? Um, my opinion is be open, do your research and get into it with your body and see what your body agrees with and what it doesn't. I was vegan for two years. I attempted being a vegetarian. Um, so when it comes to trying different diets, once it came back around to me eating meat, my body was happy. So mm -hmm. that's what I stuck with. But I know some trainers out there that are ripped and they're vegans and you don't have to necessarily get your proteins from meat. Um, but what I would focus on is a healthy amount of proteins, a healthy amount of carbs, a healthy amount of fats, and making sure that really, I wouldn't suggest any processed foods. So really, I would say if you're looking for what you should be putting into your body, really focus on natural foods, nothing you need a periodic table to figure out, and just experiment. See what works for you and what doesn't. If you feel like you might be lactose intolerant, take dairy out of your diet for two weeks, place it back in, see what you get out of that. But um, I wouldn't say there's one particular way a woman should eat just because she's more muscular or because she's thinner or whatever the case. I say that's something she would have to experiment with on her own and see what works because we're all different. Mm -hmm. And you know the myth of oh if you want to be thick eat some cornbread it'll go straight to your booty that's genetics honey that I mean you you can't just say if I eat a certain thing it'll go straight to this area unless genetically that's how you're structured mm -hmm. so I think somebody needs to break that down because I've, I haven't really read but I've heard about eat right for your blood type right. and I've heard it's been highly recommended by a lot of my friends and they say it really you know it works and it actually talks to them really on a personal level you know it's something that we probably need to do for women of color mm -hmm. you know to kind of identify the different body types and what's going on and kind of show the foods and what they do for that body type but you mentioned something earlier um, and you were talking about lactose intolerance right. and you know listening to your body now there's a lot of things that that I think as far as for women, they have to deal with food different than men, like women react to food different, like they can get headaches, they can, you know, get bloated, they can get, you know, all kind of things that are going with the body based upon the food that they eat. And they don't even know it's food, they'll take it like it's stress, right. or it's their day to day life, you know, when did or how do we get to the fact that we don't even know what's affecting us through food? Um, I think we're starting to lose value for what we're putting into our bodies. And both men and women can have the same ailments from food, um, such as, let's say, when you're eating your whole grains. To you, it's normal. This is what I've always eaten. Mm -hmm. But then you notice, I keep getting these migraines. The last thing you wonder is, is it my cereal that's giving me these migraines? Am I eating too much sugar? Is there something my body isn't? 
agreeing with. It's mm, a lot less severe than you being allergic to something and being able to see It's instantly. more severe than allergic? Are you serious? Oh, well, the ailments are less severe because okay. you're not able to see got it, got you know, it. when you're um, going through inflammation unless you're aware of it. With um, you being allergic to something, immediately, okay, if you're allergic to a particular food, you'll break out in hives, you'll yes, stop yes, breathing, yes, you know. Yes, so um, when you look at it on a smaller scale and you have to look at each thing you're putting in your body and how it affects you that's when it gets down to understanding and listening okay when I eat this cheese am I getting gas okay well that's not normal that's not something you have to deal with every day so if we start valuing what we put into our bodies from what we're drinking what we're eating then we'll start to see what's really causing these ailments because it's not always stress it's not always a, a certain medication it's not always oh just because today is Tuesday it's because you have to look at every outlet what did you eat that day that was different you know like really paying attention and being in tune is key to understanding what your body likes and what it doesn't yeah because you mentioned off camera you said that you know there's probably a 90 day period where you have to like say hey look you know i'm going to do my normal diet but this week i'm going to take off like milk or dairy or and then the next week i'm going to take off like grains or and you start going down a checklist mm -hmm. and then you start seeing how your body reacts right. to when you get rid of one particular food right. and then i guess if you feel you know normal or you feel better then you start to like build upon that that type of uh, activity right go over that a little bit more detail um so from my own experience i discovered i was lactose intolerant around 1920 um so i understood i just should stay away from dairy products um when i began eating a more simple diet sticking to my vegetables meat sweet potato um, you love sweet potato. I really do. I really, <laughs> really do. It's like the best. But um, <laughs> once I removed uh, sugars, grains, and dairy, um, I went back about three weeks after starting my new diet. I ate a small piece of cake and instantly got a headache. Yes, yes. So I said, okay, now I know that these particular foods cause these symptoms. And I grew up having migraines, and I... Mm, I really wouldn't attribute it to the sugar because I also had sugar alone that didn't cause headache. It does cause a little inflammation, but I contributed that to the flour wheat that was within the cake because once I tried it again with bread, same thing happened. Mm -hmm. So um, that was me figuring out, okay, this is what my body doesn't like. So you, you remove wheat from your diet altogether? Yes. Oh, so you're gluten free? Yes, very oh, much. Oh, wow. So. Yeah, wow. so I don't even eat gluten free bread. I just don't eat it at all. Is there such thing? What is gluten free bread made with? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I haven't really done my research on it because it's like, okay, <laughs> bread is bread. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> you're going in further and stripping more nutrients out of it. Uh, no, but the biggest problem I have uh, with wheat are the anti nutrients. So that's mainly why the I Anti nutrients. Away. Yes. Oh, wow. See, so. now you're getting deep. See, <laughs> I don't you know, worry about too deep. No, no, no. I can handle it. It's <laughs> just right. that, like I said, as a man, we, we take things for granted. We, we don't have as many ups and downs. And like I do, I regulate. I know dairy affects me. And, you know, I still love cheese. So every now and then I'll go and buy my little cheese and do my little binge for that day or two. And, you know, I also... Um, Sugars, I try to stay away from that. But, you know, of course, uh, I try to include agave and et cetera. So I've actually fine-tuned a few things. But, like, I, you know, I never thought about removing wheat from my diet, mm -hmm. you know, because – and then I would think about what, what, what I would substitute that. Because I have a problem. I, I know as far as breads and uh, carbs, they kind of hang out in my stomach if I don't really get a hard cardio workout. So I'm trying to stay away from that. Mm -hmm. And just on that level, you know, it takes a lot of discipline for me. Yeah, it, it definitely will take a lot of discipline for anyone. I mean, it wasn't like magic for me either because even though I wasn't really a grain person, I, I mean, especially for women, we crave certain foods. So telling mm -hmm. me I can't have my chocolate during that time of the month is like, are you freaking kidding me? But I had to value myself. I had to understand that my want and desire for something that isn't really that good for me should never outweigh the value of my life and my health. 
No, oh, well, that's great. But, you know, how do I apply that? Did you find substitutions? You know, when you do have that craving, you know, instead of chocolate? Um, my focus um, was more on berries. Um, berries are very, very low in sugar. They won't spike your insulin levels as high. Um, and I, I love honey. Um, so I, st- I try to stay closer to the natural sugars if I'm going to have them. But I just... I personally would say it had a lot to do with my discipline Uh, after attempting to be vegan for two years I learned to appreciate food and I said you know what if I was able to do that I'm disciplined enough to remove these things from my diet knowing that they're not going to optimize my goals in fitness so now I'm a client I'm a woman I'm coming to you and I'm a man as well and you know you can see maybe I got about 30 to 40 pounds to lose and so what's your regimen what what can I expect not only you know I mean we talk I'm sure you're going to be talking about food but what kind of workouts and what are you going to take me through what can a typical client expect from you and how are you going to you know give them the results that they are looking for Um, For me, if they're looking for fat loss, um, the reason I don't really focus on saying weight loss is because weight could also mean muscle. And if they are solely dedicated to just burning fat, I'm definitely going to put them um, on a cardio regimen. I'll also have them do weight resistance training as well, but I will always change up their routine after so long to make sure that their bodies aren't getting used to any one workout or any Mm -hmm. one exercise. And I'll be sure to at least be able to track their fitness and make sure that they optimize their weight loss goals along with proper nutrition as well. So um, because I always program for my individual, I would definitely have to go down the line, see what they're capable of doing, see if they have any ailments and program accordingly. You're pretty thorough. Yes, very. I want to make sure that my clients get the same results I've been getting. Okay. Well, definitely, you know, Sean LaPree, you know, um, so where can they find you? Because, you know, I know people want to stay tuned and I want to look for you. I know where you're at, but where could they find you? Um, Well, I'm really big on Instagram. That's where I hang out the most, at Sean LaPree. Um, I'm a private personal trainer, so any equipment that would be necessary, I can bring to my clients. Um, I love working out outside, parks, beach, um, or I come to my clients' homes as well. So, um, yeah, definitely I'm on Facebook, Sean LaPree, and on Instagram, at Sean LaPree. Wow, okay. And so now, do you, for yourself, are you still, like, because I know, are you still doing the variety of workouts? Do you still do the pole dance? you still do the weight? Give me like what you do to stay in shape and stay mm-hmm. this type of fit. Um, well, aside from weightlifting um, five times a week, I definitely stick to pole dance. It's my first love with fitness, so definitely. Um, also silk and Lara, which is hoop. Um, so I have an obsession with being in the air. <laughs> um, aside from that, um, when I program certain exercise programs for my clients I go through them as well I would never tell someone to do something that I haven't done before Uh Um, and I just enjoy it I'm also still in the process of losing fat as well so with my clients they understand that I'm on this journey with you I'm still not finished I'm still not where I want to be so oh my goodness my workouts can range anywhere from power workouts lifting weights over my head uh, which would be cleaning jerks um <laughs> can you imagine her doing clean and jerks look love, at her yes oh I, my god you're i love it deadlifting is my favorite 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 oh my goodness um but yeah i do a variety of workouts um mm-hmm. cardio plyometric power but i mean obviously i'm really big on being able to manipulate my own body weight and uh pole and weightlifting are definitely like number one on my list now so. for me um I'm I'm curious because I know probably about three to five years ago when I was serious about losing the weight that I had picked up, um, I had never heard that at the time, but like you need to shock your body. You need to do a variety of different things with your body. And how new is that idea? Is that something that's been around for a while? Because I'm like, why did it take me so long to figure that out? Um, I think that for the average person who's working out on their own, there are a lot of things that they aren't aware of unless they go into studies to become a personal trainer or to just enlighten themselves more, do more research. With trainers, we do the research for you so that you don't have to worry about it. You just show up, we work you out. But yeah, you do have to shock your body because um, once your body gets used to a particular workout, you're not going to get the benefits of it. Um, So it's kind of like, okay, what's next now? Uh, 
I've gotten used to this and we're not moving. But there are small acute variables that you can change in your workout that will send your body right back into that shock you need so that you feel that soreness, which is a good thing, and you know that you're getting the benefits. Okay. Well, we're going to go to a break right now. We're at the halfway point, and we're going to come back with our second guest, Tiana Oliver, and we're going to actually stay tuned for our Mind, Booty, and Soul Live. Uh, again, tune in and chime in. It's 323-473-3100. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Look at you, girl. Who taught you how to love her? Look at the world who's on the magazine covers. Pencil thin waves with commodified traits from the one African mother of the human race. Homogenized lover, glorified and white face. For quick cash, add into the hyper then chase. Just sexual bait, yeah, she's falling from grace. A nice dish to taste, just a bitch to waste. Whoa, a man who We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk hi this is dr levi your fitness doctor making a personal house call inviting you to join me wednesday at 10 a.m pacific for my all new show the dr levi show join us as we discuss fitness health and well-being including emotional and spiritual health so don't forget to tune in to the dr levi show every wednesday at 10 a.m pacific exclusively on LATalkLive.com and the Talk Live Broadcast Network. You can also catch us on iTunes, Radio R&B, or watch us on Ustream.tv, or catch us on the Live 365 Network, and now on Radio Flag and Stitcher Radio, reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is Alina inviting you to join me every Wednesday at noon for Alina's Beauty Talk and more exclusively on LA Talk Live. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio, R&B, or watch us on Ustream.tv, Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is Donna Quarles, and I'm inviting you to join us every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. for The Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People. Join us as we discuss the topics that are relevant to today's generational leaders. So don't forget to tune in to The Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People, every Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. right here on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio r and Live 365, Radio Flag, and now Stitcher Radio. Or watch and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hello world, how you living? This is Dee Brex, your host of the all-new rap project here on LA Talk Live. That's latalklive.com. Or you can find me on iTunes Radio in the R&B section. That's The Rap Project every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's Wednesdays at 7 p.m. West Coast Time. So don't be late. On The Rap Project, I will be playing the very best of rap and hip-hop that goes beyond the ordinary. So connect with me, your host, D. Brax, The Rap Connoisseur, on The Rap Project every Wednesday at 7 right here on latalklive.com where we are more than just talk American booty for sale in every nation American booty for sale in every nation American booty for sale in every nation my booty American booty for sale in every nation American booty for sale we're back we're back second half of the show and we have our additional guests Tiana Oliver, she's here. Like, Sean, it's so great to be here. Oh, it's great, it's great. Uh, you just finished a workout, huh? Yes, I uh, just finished a cardio yoga session um, with a few of uh, my folks, my family, um, out of Kennethon Park. Yeah, that my favorite workout, people. Yes, you definitely. know, <laughs> if you're in Los Angeles, uh, and it's, I can't believe I, I've lived in that neighborhood for quite some time. And I didn't really get turned into Kennethon Park till about 2001, you know, with Coach E. That's crazy. You know what? Me too. Um, <laughs> I've been, you know, I've been living in Ladera Heights all of my life. And, you know, when I came back from, 
you know, college, Coach E on the hill. Yeah. And that's where we met. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yes. It's like right next to us, and it's a big park, you know. It's and like it's Runyon Canyon. Too. Yes. Oh, it's so beautiful up there. You can see um, south, up north in the Hollywood Hills. Down, yes, you know, yes. On a clear day, you can see the beach. Yeah, exactly. You know, oh, I, I got, I got. We haven't had that killer sun that just kind of is really hot. I love it when I go up there and it's hot and I'm sweating. A lot of people don't like it when it's hot up there because the breeze is a little bit hotter than normal city. Right. I was about to say the breeze kind of keeps it cool, but you know, I think. You might just like being hot, Mike. Like <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I, I just like sweating. And, you know, I feel like I'm actually doing something. Like I'm working out and I'm getting all these, you know, stuff out of my system. So, yeah. Um, so how did you get into fitness? Because when I first met you out here, you were just like helping Coach E train and just pushing me up that hill. Well, you know, um, I guess when I was two. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> ever since I started playing soccer, uh, which is – uh, probably close to when I could walk. Um, I, br I have older brothers, so um, they kind of got me into soccer. And then my father is, um, I'm not even thinking about telling his age. He's celebrating his probably 39th birthday for a couple times, you know, a few times. When does, when does <laughs> a dad not want to share his age? <laughs> well, let's just say, you know, he, he's lived and he's over 70, mm -hmm. you know. So let's nice. say he can get some senior tickets. But um, <laughs> he when I say he's in great shape, I mean fantastic shape. Um, he still loves what he does and, you know, not even thinking about retiring. But every morning I remember as a little girl watching him get up watching him walk you know he would walk around Ladera he you know go say hi to everybody and now and everyone around our neighborhood knows who he is so mm -hmm. he's always like I see your father all the time and I'm like yes I know I know because he gets it in and he likes to sweat too so you know he <laughs> layers up in the morning and yes, gets his three sweet. miles four miles five miles you know whatever pleases and um, he taught me that it's always about doing something you know it's about getting up getting that you know the cardio in kind of getting that mind together getting that heart together getting the body together and Every, you know, everything's warmed up for the day. Okay. So now, your your name of your company is Card Yoga. Uh, it's actually Cardi Yoga. It's spelled Card Yoga, oh, yeah, but it's a big Y. <laughs> so, yeah, Cardi, oh, Cardi Yoga, because okay. it's a little cardio and a little bit of yoga all meshed together. Um, I, I, I like to say that it's, a, it's Hatha, Vinyasa. Um, if, you know, you do know about yoga, power yoga and the flow of yoga and also a lot of different Pilates and, you know, strengthening exercises. Um, I can't stay still for too long and, you know, I don't really like all the namaste, like, you know, meditation style. Um, you know, I do appreciate it, but I'm a very much an athlete and I like to, you know, make sure I elevate my heart rate, get sweaty, mm -hmm get you know get power um, behind these muscles and um, and strength you know it's about building the body and building strength but I, I've actually done yoga I, many many times about 20 different occasions at least mm -hmm. and uh, I'm a novice with all the terms and you know all I know is that the first time I went there I, I didn't have a chance to really recover you know you would go from one thing to the next and I was like man this is kind of you know tough <laughs> you know and then I had to deal with the flexibility and then the next one I, I remember and this is the only way I can categorize it oh I got a chance to breathe and capture myself right. in between right. and then go to the next one and then yours it, it's a little bit of yeah I get to recreate myself and, and, and rest and then go on to the next one I don't feel stress but then I, I don't know my mental it, it's like I feel like energy like I, I feel like stuff is leaving my body and instead of leaving it through sweat it's leaving it through you know my mental like I remember I did that and I felt like uh, after I did that my body was so open and I happened to sit in one of my friends' car, and we don't really hang out that much anymore, but, and he was just playing this kind of like, you know, objectified hip hop music, and it was just, I got a headache, because I was so open, and I remember that session, I was like, wow, I felt so exhilarated, and the first thing that hit me was this music that, you know, at once upon a time, I probably would have loved it, but not right then and there. So, what is what happened to me? What was that? <laughs> um, well, it sounds like you just were loved all at once, you know. Um, the way that I practice yoga uh, and the way that I also teach as well is, number one, yoga is about you. It's about your experience, your personal experience, um, 
you're perfect just the way you are within these moments. You know, some days you're feeling a little bit more flexible, some days maybe not so much, you know. Um, earlier today, I did a lot of walking around instead of, you know, going through all the poses with everybody just so I can kind of, you know, um, guide them a little bit more, make sure all the form was correct. But uh, also being able to help them breathe, relax, you know. I noticed uh, at one point this uh, young lady was, you know, trying to get her head down and she had tension in her neck. So I just released some tension throughout her neck with my fingers Release. and yes. that's what you do. So you're doing that through breath. You're doing that through still a lot of meditation, you know, just concentration on, you know, where are, is my body supposed to be placed? How is it supposed to feel? Um, and while your mind is opening to this, your body feels that experience. So it just sounded like, you know, you just got the spirit just took over you, you know, um, I'd like to say it was cardio yoga <laughs> no, <laughs> but you it, know it was. you know because it, it was the yoga experience for I, sure. I do i always do stretching and you know i've come from the track discipline where you just stretch and you hold it for like you know 30 seconds and then you go on to the next one yes. and then um I, I remember doing this routine where it's constantly kind of moving you hold it and you're you're doing a little bit more as far as uh, you know, as far as you're using your body weight to hold itself, but you're stretching at the same time. And see, with your cardio, cardi, say it for me yeah, again. Yeah, th that was perfect. Cardio. Oh, oh, okay, okay. See, Mike, yeah, you're it. quick. Got it, got it. <laughs> with yours, it, it was a little bit of both. I got a chance to stretch. I got, but also, you know, I had to use my muscles to hold myself. You know, like you were having me with my legs completely <laughs> out there and my and my knee forward, and then I'm going underneath this knee, and you know, I mean, but and and, I, and my core had to be like this. It's like I'm almost feel like that I'm doing weights and stretching at the same time. Right. Well, I'm gonna put you in a pose that you would normally hit in the weight room. Like, let's just say a lunge, for example. You exactly. know, we, th we there was a time that we were doing a lunge, and I believe what you're talking about is these little reach unders that we do, which is. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, it just shreds the core, you know, obliques, upper body. You're getting your glutes, you know, your glutes and your legs um, all the way down to the Achilles, you know, all the way down to the feet and the toes because your toes are digging into the ground. Your palms are pressed into the ground. Your arms are, are extended and they're elongating. And you're at this point in time concentrating on extending those fingers all the way out. And every little muscle that you think that you don't have is being used. Mm -hmm. And you don't really realize it until the next day where you think when you wake up and you're like, oh, what is that? Yes, yes, yes. That was yoga, cardio okay. yoga. So now, uh, people locally here in Los Angeles, you know, you're on Kenneth Hahn. And where else do you actually teach your class? I teach at the beach, um, Playa Vista, and um, Playa, and that's Playa Vista Beach, right? You know, there's a lagoon down there, mm -hmm. um, right off of uh, Culver and Jefferson, and um, you know, we go right on the sand. So, you know, a beach workout. Now you're talking about. <laughs> several other elements we're talking about standing in sand yes you know you've walked in sand before mm -hmm. and you get tired mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. maybe you're trying to look cute and you're sweating all of a sudden it's like <laughs> oh my goodness why do why do my feet hurt well you know with the sand you know you're holding a pose let's say dancer with one foot or a tree you know you've, you're trying to work on that balance but now all of those little muscles in your feet your toes are all getting the work all the way through up your calves and into the cat you know the mm -hmm. um, hamstrings and the quads like we're working every every piece and as you're gazing out over the ocean you're now trying to concentrate and breathe and work on your posture and making sure every little piece is right so that when we're practicing you know sitting up at the office or sitting in our car we're not slouching forward we're mm -hmm. always practicing our posture and i believe that perfect posture you know um brings health and wellness really yeah definitely you know have you ever, well number one like if you just practice drawing that chest up and squeezing those shoulder blades back and then pulling that belly button into spine and then going ahead and elongate your head through the crown like lifting that spine and just really stretching it out um and then say, I look good, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that in itself, that mentality in itself is really positive And that's uplifting. You see what happens when, you know, if you see a young lady and her head is down and she's looking at her phone or, you know, uh, just scuffing her feet or something like that. Like that doesn't say that I'm proud to be a woman that says, you know, I'm young. I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still mm -hmm. learning to enjoy myself and be proud of who I am, you know, we always like to see our people standing tall, standing up for themselves, right? That's what they say, stand tall. Well, how are you gonna stand tall if you're slouching? Like, that's not the tallest I can be. 
So how important is that mentality when you're going into fitness and losing weight? Like what I'm hearing from you is that your mental has to be in a certain state. And I think we talked about this too, Sean, as far as if you're not mentally uh, excited about yourself, feeling good about yourself, even though you might be overweight, just loving yourself, you're not going to be able to lose weight or get to that point where your body wants to go or where you want your body to go as quickly. Right. Well, if you're not feeling good about yourself or you're always stressed out, like it's proven, you know, doctors say that when you have stress, it's very hard, um, you know, you keep that weight on. So um, my thing is also because with there's stress, there, there's, mm, there's not love. And, you know, God is love. And God has made us in his perfect, her perfect, you know, mm. image. I like and, that, and that to me is like religion in itself, mm -hmm. you know, like love who you are, because number one, we are all one, you know, because we are all made in his, her glory. So, you know, with love at the forefront of your heart, now we can begin healing ourselves. But it always starts with, you know, if you say that, oh, I'm to this, I'm to that. The universe only hears the positivity. So you have to say, I want this. I want that. I want to be healthy. I want to be fit. Or, you know, envision just you as being perfect in his image because everyone's perfect at exactly this moment. Like we are exactly where we need to be. There are no mistakes. There are no accidents. Like I believe in, you know, destiny and that mm -hmm. we are put here to be exactly, you know, exactly how we are right now now if we would like to improve ourselves a little bit you know if we want to sex it up a little bit you know mind booty soul, all <laughs> that you know uh then we have to put that positivity and that love into our hearts you know we have to believe it wholly fully but it, it, that's a little bit more difficult for women than it is for men because you guys you have so, so? Many, oh, I think you guys have so many outsides influences. You got tele television telling you need to be like this. You got all these different beauty products to say you need to keep up with that. You know, you've got like, you know, part of society saying you're too thin. Part of society say to you're fat. I mean, you know, as men, we don't have to navigate through all that maze. You know, we can just kind of like, OK, you know what? I do what I do very well. I might be a little overweight. I'm not happy, but, you know, I'll get over it or I'll get better. But that's not the same well okay I could kind of agree a little bit with some of you know some of that statement and, and disagree a little bit and um, which part do you disagree on <clears throat> we all have the challenge you know um, it depends on what our lives you know what our lives have been before now you know whether we've had parents or something or you know uh the educational system or uh whatever trials and tribulations has let have led up to this point um we have to remember that uh that number one like i said before we are loved so we're perfect just the way we are mm -hmm. society likes to put these images out there but we also have the choice to believe in those images or not you know um let's take our reality shows for example you yes, know, take it. Like, oh my goodness is this really reality <laughs> right. like can we <laughs> can we really believe sean is this really reality yeah, that's not reality but we're buying into it like it is we we are because it's the perception it's what we see you know because we don't love ourselves like, do you see how it all just comes back? We're believing this person who's telling us lies because we don't trust in who we are. You know, we've got single parents, you know, you've got uh, you've got this education system that is just, you know, crazy pumping out these kids, but who don't know how to read. Like, we don't know how to believe in ourselves just yet because we're not being given the skills or, you know, those tools in order to succeed. And if we don't believe in our own success, then how, how is anyone else going to? Mm -hmm. So the idea is to continue to educate ourselves, but we don't even know that the obesity, I mean, do you know the childhood obesity? Are you kidding me? 40, over 40%? Like these are our children. These are our children who are eating crappy food, fast food. Like if you're at McDonald's right now, if you're at Burger King right now, just drive away. <laughs> right? Just get away. Just go to the store and get your own food. You know, <laughs> yes. But it, it's the lifestyle because we put so much emphasis on our job. We put so much emphasis on our career, our children, and all these other things that we take little time with the car for our food. Like, you know, part of food is the whole preparation. And, you know, people who really cook well, they put love into it. They're actually praying over the food. And I actually can feel right. that we don't really have the time as a culture to do that anymore 
that's because we're in this technology of like speed it up fast 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 right. like make it happen now you know um who said that going slow is wrong who said that you know not making that red light is wrong like who said you know that just taking a breath in the morning or cooking your breakfast in the morning is wrong instead you know we live in a place where it be it was probably nine nine a.m. that we had to be at work till eight eight a.m. to seven a you know seven a.m. and it's like we're being pushed to work all the time for what kind of money you know or what kind of living or what kind of lifestyle like if you're not happy in the space that you are I understand that you have to grind in order to make it happen but continue to realize what you're passionate about continue to you know figure out like what you love and what you're you know loving to do like I assume that there's probably a majority of the society who go to work and they're just like, just another day. Yes. Just another day. That's the culture. And that's why they don't want to go work out afterwards because after you are at a job that you, I don't like to use this word, but hate or dislike very much. Um, if you're <laughs> at a job like that, then, you know, <laughs> what's going to say I want to go to the park and go get in a run or go and get in some yoga or go get in a lift or something, especially if you haven't been groomed to be, you know, that fitness person. That's true. That's true. That idea. But, you know, I'm working with this great group of ladies in the morning and we started at 10 and then we went to nine and they were like, you know what? We're OK with seven. Like, let's get this in. Let's start this day off. Right. Like, you know, they're very inspiring to me, you know, um, what you would say, I guess, average, but not average in, in itself. Like these are, these are women who are finding their greatness. These mm -hmm. are women who are beginning to believe in themselves and beginning to love themselves and beginning to see the changes and beginning to believe in themselves and find that success and just, I say, celebrate all things. Celebrate even the small things. Celebrate every goal that you hit. If you hit two push-ups today and you only hit one yesterday, uh, celebration. Okay. <laughs> So both of you guys can answer why would I need a trainer? What what's the purpose? I can go out and work out and I can do my thing. What does a trainer do for me and is it worth the cost? Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead. Sean, go ahead. Um it well Here's the thing, and touching on what you two were talking about earlier, we need to value ourselves. We need to value our health and not value so much this nine to five or value so much getting things instantly. So many people want things right here, right now, and you really don't appreciate it unless you work hard for it. Mm -hmm. With a trainer, because we do that research, we've been through the trials and tribulations, we know what will work and what won't, we know how to specifically program for you. Why should you have to go through all of that work when I've done it for you already? So when you're dealing with a trainer, you're not just getting someone that tells you three sets of 10 reps. No, you're getting someone who's there to dedicate themselves to you, give you the knowledge that they have so that they make sure that you optimize your weight loss goals or your muscle gain goals. So when you have a trainer, you have that cheerleader, you have that person that's there throughout your whole session just to listen to you. Sometimes we go a whole day without being able to vent and let out what we need to say. And aside from us working out and you know helping you gain your uh, achieve your fitness goals we're also giving you a opportunity to be yourself let it out what happened at work tell me you know <laughs> um so yeah i definitely get the like, frustrations out. exactly so whatever needs to happen if you need to scream to get through this last set let's do it mm -hmm. this is your time to be yourself and not care about anything outside of it mm -hmm. so that's that's like the number one reason especially why i went ahead and pursued being a trainer because I want to give that people that outlet and let them know that exercise isn't a chore this could be your stress relief because stress is what will cause you not only with weight loss cause you to gain diseases that aren't necessary these are things you could totally avoid by cutting stress out of your life and exercise is definitely one great way to do it okay I like how you touched on the diseases part because stress like you know stress stress sugar like that grows the diseases in our body exactly. tumors and everything that's fe it feeds it yep. feeds it you know um i you know i would say that my job or i've always seen my job as a trainer uh yoga instructor uh, motivator whatever you want to you know um label it is that i hope that you don't need me all the time i hope that you grow 
out of needing my help. And, you know, we just enjoy our friendship and enjoy our relationship, you know. Um, but I'm also a stickler for form. So I want to make sure that we stay healthy and we stay, you know, um, injury free. Uh, I work a lot with athletes and, you know, yoga. I wish that I knew about yoga when I was playing soccer in college because, yes. you know, I ended up tearing my ACL my sophomore year and I just feel like if I was stretching a little bit more, maybe, maybe, you know, it would have helped. It would have helped with my flexibility. Um, but I find that, you know, being flexible and, um, and also, uh, focusing on just like that, that muscle growth, um, and with, of course, the form and staying injury free, uh, we can, focus on which muscles we want to grow, how we want to shape our body. You know, uh, voluptuous is in, in big and beautiful and coke body figure is all good. You know, if you want to lean it out and, um, you know, kind of tone a little bit more like that's fine too. If you want to build muscle and be a little bit, you know, thicker in the shoulders or the legs or the glutes, you know, that's fine too. However, the body, you know, whatever body you want, we can get it for you because we've been doing this literally our entire lives. But that's that's a good point because now plastic surgery is so popular uh. and everybody wants that really quick fix and you go to the doctor and he's programmed when well, I can take this fat out of here and I can put it in over here in your butt and then we can shape the top half of your butt with the parts of your hips <laughs> and you know they can actually give you like a, a, a virtual reality version of yourself in the future. How difficult is are you guys combating that particular mentality when you come in contact with clients when you're telling them, OK, well, the path that I'm that you're going to take with me is going to be a little bit longer and rewarding when they're having this guy saying, no, hey, you can get a surgery tomorrow and all you got to do is recover in two weeks and you're back to work. Back to work, exactly. That's <laughs> right. what the, that's what it's all been about. Back to work, so that I can do it quickly. So I got to get to work at on time, and and you know spend all this time with not everybody I like, and you know doing <laughs> something I don't like, and you know it, you know it's all about fast. Like, why do we want it fast? Like I said before, like why? Who said that fast was good? Who said that you know speed was better? Like sometimes you just got to go slow with it, you know. And imagine if you had a dream yesterday. And it came true today. Like, what? I'm down with like, that. I, <laughs> <laughs> but just imagine the, the, what you've learned across the journey. You know, I call it an adventure. You know, we're going on an adventure together. We're That's about, true. We're, we're about to make some things happen. And you're going to see the changes. And you're going to celebrate every single goal that you hit. And you're going to also be healthy and make mind changing decisions like the person who goes and pops into the doctor's office and gets nip tuck and sucked and you know all that and then boosted and lifted and you know all of that how is their mind the next two weeks exactly. you know well, no, is it the same to. is it the same is it yes. the i don't believe in myself i still think that i'm you know some per some people say i'm gonna only start with one and then I'm gonna start with two, and the next, you know, there's like 48 procedures, and it's like, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But, you know, I think that number one, I did a uh, a little 30 day kind of cleanse, and you know, I say cleanse, but it really was just kind of like eating right, you know, committing to eating right, committing to water, committing to hydration, committing to veggies, and you know, any types of proteins, and um, I could tell that my mind was becoming clearer. Mm. You know, I started believing in more things that I could do and dreaming a little bit more. And, you know, the creativity started flowing. And to me, that was priceless. Yeah, that was worth more than just here. Here's a here's 30 a G's yeah. and, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, let me give you some boobs or some booty. Yeah. Def I definitely agree. And also, I mean, with the surgeries, if you compare it to. Well, if you have children and you give them their first car when they turn 16, we all tear up our first car at 16 mm -hmm. because it was given to us. <laughs> but when we work hard for that car, do not park too close to my car. Why are you <laughs> leaning on my car? We need to value our bodies the same way. 
Um, as a person who actually struggled with weight and also considered getting liposuction because I just felt like I cannot do it, I had to realize they can go in and adjust me and do all those special things aesthetically, but they can't go inside my mind and say, hey, you're satisfied now, you're happy, this is what you wanted. Because once I do that, as she was saying, it goes from one procedure to 48 procedures. Now there's more that needs to be done. Anything that comes within an ins instant isn't, with Values. exactly there's no substance behind it i mean if you believe it took god dang near a week to create the universe if you believe in evolution none of that happened overnight and we wouldn't be where we are now without that time being taken out so i definitely believe that going through the process lets you know that you can do it and this is something that isn't out of your reach it gives you the power not someone holding a scalpel over you now just and we're going to finalize this but Somebody related to me like, hey, you know, if somebody gave you a million dollars tomorrow, you know, and, you know, you came out of more of a, a poor kind of like struggling, you know, background and somebody gave you a million dollars, it would probably be gone very quickly and you'd be stuck again being broke and wouldn't know how to deal with it. But if you, you know, were giving like uh, responsibilities on how to handle that money and the... Um, uh, the path that what money does and how to bring more money you start developing that muscle then you'll be able to create money and retain it and that's simply what we're doing with the body because these women can come out of these surgeries and they can go right back to the same lifestyle you know and have to repeat this over and over again exactly yeah yeah exactly mike yeah. okay so uh uh tell us where we can uh, find you guys um you know where can uh the audience get a hold of you uh you could always um Reach me at cardioga.com um, or at cardioga. You know, I've got an Instagram and Twitter, and then of course uh, Facebook as well. And um, spell that for us. Uh, Facebook. Or no, no, because <laughs> you say cardi yoga. You know, <laughs> right? Cardi yoga spelled card yoga. C A R D Y O G A. Thank you, because you know, I, all this time I've been saying card yoga, card yoga. You know. And I'm definitely down. I'm down to try this cardio. You have to come see me, Sean. I'm it's going to be amazing. Definitely. Um, you can find me at, at Sean LaPree on Instagram, Sean LaPree on Facebook, spelled S H A W N L A P R E E. And we just concluded uh, the launch of Mind, Fitness, and Soul. Uh, we're dealing with people of color, our unique relationship with our bodies, and how you know our food, especially the things that we bring into our diet, affects us different than the normal casual person that lives in America. And we have to start talking about that so we can you know fine tune our bodies, and as you guys said, you know have our minds be happy so that our bodies can reflect our bodies. So stay tuned next week for another session of Mind, Booty, and Soul. And we'll have some wonderful guests. Um, we're probably going to be bringing in some fashion design people because, uh, you know, the body and the uh, accessories that we put on top of the body is really important, especially for women. So we want to talk about some of the things. We've got swimsuits. Uh, we got another person that's actually got an online business because it's all about the online business. So stay tuned next week. We'll have a wonderful show. Thank you. Bye-bye. Look at your girl, who taught you how to love her? Look at the world, who's on the magazine covers? Pencil thin waves with commodified traits from the one African mother of the human race. Homogenized lover, glorify and white face. For the cash, add into the hyper, then change. Just sexual bait, yeah, she's falling from grace. A nice dish to taste, just a bitch to waste. Whoa, a man who says bitch without context means he's got a complex. The world queen describes a woman best. But many men only understand conquest with no conscience. Contribution to evolution of progress. Gotta go through all this instead of being. And honest, be sure the ladies we know you want us. Do you know if you want the goddess or the prize? American booty for sale in every nation. 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 American booty for sale. Thank you for tuning in to LA Talk Live, reality radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we're more than just talk. Stay tuned.